Hello again guys, this is the next screencast on anatomy and physiology and this week we're going to be discussing cardiac output. Cardiac output is used to measure how intense an exercise is or how in intense you are working in terms of your heart rate and what we call stroke volume and often you'll see it represented as the letter Q. So if you see Q anywhere it just means cardiac output. And we calculate cardiac output by using a simple formula. And that formula begins with heart rate. So your heart rate is defined as the number of times your ventricles beat per minute and is always measured in BPM, beats per minute. We need to multiply heart rate by what we call stroke volume to find cardiac output. So heart rate times stroke volume equals cardiac output. And stroke volume is the amount of blood ejected by the ventricles each beat. And that is always measured in millilitres. However, please take note that a thousand millilitres is obviously a litre. And therefore you could also write litres instead of millilitres if it comes if it goes that far. For your exams you will need to know the average of each of those three things heart rate, cardiac output and stroke volume. The average heart rate for an individual is 72 beats per minute. The average stroke volume for an individual is 70 litres. And therefore, because we're multiplying heart rate times stroke volume, so it would be 72 beats per minute times 70 litres, the average cardiac output, or Q, at rest, is 5,000 millilitres, or, as I mentioned earlier, changing it to litres, 5 litres. Okay. So, overview of this page, cardiac output equals heart rate, multiplied by stroke volume and the average numbers are there at the bottom. We also need to understand this concept of EDV and ESV because it helps calculate stroke volume. EDV stands for end diastolic volume and essentially it's the amount of blood left in the ventricles at the end of the relaxation phase or the diastole phase which we learned last week so as you can see in the picture diastole phase where the two atria fill up with blood and it's just at that moment where the pressure is building enough there's a small amount of blood dripping into the ventricles that's end diastolic volume and the way we measure that end diastolic volume is any of that blood dripping into the ventricles you are measuring what's in the ventricles not what's in the atria so not all that blood filling up at the top you are measuring any speck of blood that's in the ventricles that is end diastolic volume ESV stands for end systolic volume and that's the amount of blood left in the ventricles at the end of the contraction phase so ventricular systole phase so again if you think diastole phase we fill up the two atria with blood the blood then moves to the ventricles and then the ventricles contract and push all that blood through the pulmonary artery and the aorta to move to the rest of the body and it's any blood that's remaining after that phase, after that contraction phase. Okay, so end diastolic volume EDV, end systolic volume ESV. And realistically, you just need to know the definitions of those two things. Okay. An increase in stroke volume is mainly due to what we call hypertrophy and hypertrophy is a long-term adaptation to aerobic training essentially as we do more and more long long-term aerobic work such as if we continue to go jogging each week two three times a week and we build that up 
your heart ventricle walls will start to thicken and start to increase in strength. So if we have a look here, on the left side we have normal heart, on the right side you can see hypertrophy has happened after a period of exercise. So it could be 12, 14 weeks of aerobic exercise. The ventricle wall has become much thicker and much stronger. And a couple of things happen when that, to the heart and its stages when we thicken those ventricle walls. The first thing it does, it increases the heart's ability to fill up. Because it's much more pliable and the thickness of the walls offers more strength in pushing blood around the body, it means we can fill up the atria much more so we can get more blood in to the heart. As we just mentioned, those walls at the bottom where the ventricles are are much thicker. So therefore, they can squeeze harder with more efficiency. And so therefore, it can increase the heart's force of contraction and it can empty more stroke volume per beat. So, for an athlete, if my heart is the heart on the right of those pictures, it can pump out more blood because we can fill up more to start with in the diastole phase. We can squeeze more efficiently because the muscles are far more um, are, are far stronger, and therefore the whole diastole systole phase becomes more efficient. It doesn't have to beat so many times to keep the same cardiac output because it's filling up more so it takes a little bit longer to fill up and then it squeezes harder so your heart rate actually slows down effectively but it's still maintaining the same amount of cardiac output okay as per usual go up back over this screencast make effective notes bring any questions to class and we're going to use some exercises to show heart rate increasing decreasing and how it is affected by different intensities of exercise within the lesson